Well, slap my thigh and call me Shirley. I've actually managed to find a flat earth argument and I guarantee none of you will have heard it before. So you would expect to see over especially water, large bodies of water, you'd expect to see a hump of water. Well, every time an experiment is done to find this alleged curvature of the earth, it can't be found anywhere. <laughs> you didn't really think I had, did you? Come on, there are no flat earth arguments. Just the same old nonsense regurgitated in a slightly different way by different people. And today, on Flat Earth Friday, we're going to look at Flat Earth Doctrine. Mr. Nathan Roberts, the guy that loves to go into stores and destroy globes and rip up children's science books. So let's do that! Sorry everyone, I couldn't resist. Obviously there are no flat earth arguments, just the same old nonsense. Now today we're going to look at Nathan Roberts, not to be confused with Nathan Thompson, mm -hmm. the guy who now lives in his car because the flat earth has cost him everything. Nathan Roberts is a biblically motivated flat earther. So let's have a look and see what he's got to say for himself. What's going on guys? You guys are vandalizing my car, are you? Because it's a flat earth car? Oh no. No? Okay. But you guys saw this. You guys were laughing out here. Why? I don't know about you, but I find it slightly confusing why he needs to ask kids why they were laughing at his car. When young people can see just how stupid the whole concept of flat earth is, it makes you wonder if maybe they're onto something, Nathan. You really think that the earth is a ball? Yes. It's spinning. Do you know how fast it's spinning on its axis? Okay. Do you don't know the speed though? Do you know how fast it's allegedly spinning around the earth around the sun? Okay. Well, no, no, how fast? How fast? Do you don't know? I can tell you because I've done the research. And by research, we all know he means he's gone onto YouTube and Google and typed in flat earth because that's about the size of all flat earthers' research. Now, on what planet does this guy think it's acceptable to to a <laughs> to <laughs> on what planet does this guy think it's acceptable to approach young people just because they were looking at the stickers on his car and then spill out his whole well rehearsed the earth is flat speech and that's why i know that the earth is not a spinning ball so we're allegedly spinning our axis at about 1,040 or sometimes 1,080 miles per hour. In the heliocentric universe model, the Earth allegedly... Allegedly? ...has a mean velocity of about 66,600 miles per hour around the sun. Ooh, 66,600 miles an hour around the sun. Quiver, anyone? And so I'm telling these details of the heliocentric universe model to these folks who were heckling behind my car about my flat earth stickers. And I just wish you could see their faces. Their jaw dropped. And that surprises you why? What you've got to bear in mind, Nathan, is that even young people aren't complete morons like you flat earthers. I'm asking them questions about their own universe model that they believe in, that they have no understanding of, of which I was of similar uh, mindset. I also blindly believed that for a number of years, majority of my life, until I started looking at the details, the finer details of what all that means to live in a heliocentric universe model. Well, what it means to live in the heliocentric model is to live within normal, sane levels of reality. And when you say that you too believed in the, the heliocentric model for most of your life, I think we may need you to elaborate on that because I suspect what you mean was you believed in it until you discovered flat earth videos on YouTube. And you don't feel any of it. You feel the breeze on your hair. You see a little gnat flying through the air. You see birds flying without having to account for any of that. You can have a helicopter that hovers above the earth without any motion of, without having to take any account of 
you know, switching around for the motion of the earth underneath its, you know, propell propellers. None of that's happening. Water, when you go to test out water, if the earth was actually a ball, do you know how, what the circumference of it is? What's the size of it? You don't know, but you believe you're living on a spinning ball. But again, that point is completely irrelevant. So do you know what the circumference of the earth is? They didn't know. But you believe you're living on a spinning ball? Okay then, Nathan, let me ask you this. Do you know how many hairs you have in your beard? No? How do you know you have a beard then? <laughs> what a dick. It's 24,900 miles circumference. If you do the spherical trigonometry on that, it comes out to a curvature of eight inches per mile squared approximately. So you would expect to see over especially water, large bodies of water, you'd expect to see a hump of water. Well, every time an experiment is done to find this alleged curvature of the earth, it can't be found anywhere. Now far be it from me to criticize anyone, but I think certain members of your own community have proved without doubt that there's curvature to the earth. Enrique, how high is your light? 17 feet. I mean, I, you know, it's his, um, there's, we don't see you, Enrique. Lift up your, lift up your light way above your head. Interesting. The water, it's flat. Water always seeks to find level. But the problem with that is that flat and level are two entirely different things. Flat means there's no significant high or low spots. And level just means that it's parallel to the horizon. So it's completely impossible for either of those things to apply to the shape of the Earth anyway. So as retarded as this concept may seem, which I agree, I, I, I laughed, you know, as well. I, I tried to prove that we were living on a spinning ball without using any NASA photos or any of that, which when you look at it, they're all composites and they're CGI meaning they're not true pictures or photos. <laughs> I tried to find evidence without using pictures from NASA because they're all CGI or composite. Right, they're not CGI. It depends how you look at it. And it depends on how you understand the definition of CGI. If you mean computer-generated images, then yeah, obviously they are. And the reason most of them are, and nobody's trying to say they're not, is the, the composite photographs, so basically they're made up of a load of little photographs all welded together, if you like, in its simplest terms, to make the overall picture. Think of it like this. Um, I don't know how good an analogy this is, but this is the one you're getting. Most smartphones now have got the ability to take a, a panoramic picture. So you stand on, I don't know, you stand on the uh, a hilltop, and you, you take a panoramic picture, you follow it around, follow it around, and then when your phone processes that information, you've got a really long photo. So does that then make that photo fake? Because that's a composite photo, so technically that photo is CGI. CGI doesn't always have to equate to something being fake. Um, you don't have any evidence, there's no evidences for a spinning ball. You're just being completely ridiculous now, Nathan. There's nothing but evidence to show that we live on a spinning ball, as you like to call it. The, the evidence is overwhelming. Somebody choosing not to accept evidence, not to accept the reality that's presented to them, does not make it untrue, doesn't make it fake. The only thing that's fake, the only thing that's untrue, is the notion from the minds of morons that there's even the remotest possibility that the earth is flat. And you might be asking, well, what's the reason for proposing that the earth is stationary and flat? Oh no, this should be good because I've been wondering that exact same thing myself right since the very first second I discovered the flat earth movement. Well, the reason is, is because God's word's always faithful and true. If the creator can't document his creation properly, He's neither Lord, he's neither Savior, he's not, not even Creator. Ah. <laughs> but he's not even real. So, the magic man that lives in the clouds wrote the Bible. Is, is that where we go with this one, Nathan? So, if you have mainstream science saying you're living on a spinning ball, you evolved from apes, then that means you're living in a godless creation that came from nothing. 
No, it doesn't. It just means we're living in reality. And correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't most of the conflict in the world caused by religion? And if there was a God who was this almighty, merciful God, then why are there children born with disabilities? Why are there so many deaths that aren't caused by old age? Why are so many people made to suffer? If you were God, was this so-called merciful father, where is he when people actually need him? He isn't anywhere, because he's not real. Sorry, Nathan, to burst your bubble or your dome. <laughs> Whereas if the Creator is true, Jesus Christ is real, He is documented as the Creator in John chapter 1, nothing that was made was made without Him. Whoa, 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 Mr. Robert. Let's rewind a little bit. So, Jesus is the Creator, nothing was created without Him. But isn't Jesus supposedly the Son of God? And I thought it was God that created everything, including Jesus. He managed to magically put Jesus into the Virgin Mary and then was born. And somehow he's also the creator of everything. Hmm. Something smells a bit fishy to me. And he is the manifest the word of God, John 1.14. That means we have a creator, someone who has created us and who has given us rules to live by, by which if we don't follow, we go to hell. No, nobody goes to hell either because that isn't real, Nathan. Which is the importance why we understand the creation, because you understand the creator. He loves us. He sent his son on the, to die on the cross. Sounds like a bit of a knob to me. And that's why flat earth matters, because it's biblically supported. Perfect. So the flat earth matters because it's supported by a book which is entirely fictional. And there is absolutely no proof that any of that happened either. And that's... That's awesome. So your whole argument, Nathan, is that the flat earth is important because it's supported by the Bible. Whereas everything else in mainstream says completely opposite. I wrote a book on it. It's called The Doctrine of the Shape of the Earth, Conference of Biblical Perspective. And I'm not videoing you. I'm just videoing myself. So you guys don't have to be fearful of that. But I've got a YouTube channel called Flat Earth Doctrine. It's got almost 20,000 subs. I speak at conferences. I do street preaching, evangelism. Um, I've got a laser test coming up at Myrtle Beach, uh, June 2nd. We're going to do some laser tests over there. Um, I'm always looking for the curvature. I can't find any. The motion of the earth, it can't be found. So what I'm saying is, is that you have to decide where you put your faith. You're either going to put it in God's word or you're going to put it in man. And to translate that even further, I think what he's trying to say is you either put your faith in a fictional book written about the magical man in the sky with a sun that magically appeared inside a virgin or you accept reality and embrace the scientific breakthroughs that we're making every day and enjoy your life rather than living in fear of somebody that doesn't exist anyway and who backs up the importance of flat earth where man's gonna say well we went to Mars we went to the moon none of these things can be validated so I'm just saying you guys got any questions for me oh me me I've got a message for you mister are you so stupid <laughs> well I'll post it but it's not gonna be with you guys in it yeah, you know, it's not distinguishable. No, no names, none of that. Okay. So no one knows anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. 
but I saw you guys laughing at it, so I figured I must give a defense because I understand it seems ridiculous. No, that's okay. I, I also felt the same way when I first saw this idea. I thought it was completely preposterous, ridiculous, retarded, so I get it. So thanks for letting me share that with you guys. Well, in fairness, you didn't really give them much of a choice, did you? You just decided to harass them when all they did was look at the stickers on your car. And at the end of the day, that's your fault for having them there. But anyway, I don't know about you, but I'm all Nathan Roberts out. Right, bear with me a second. Let's, uh, let's, let's have a drum roll, please. Now, hopefully, you can see a list of the lovely people that have chosen to support this channel scrolling smoothly up the screen without any of their names cut off and if for some reason they are still cut off then I really don't know what to tell you apart from sorry and I'm still very grateful but I'll have confidence they've got look they're fine and just in case, just to be doubly sure, so that you all can see that I do actually know how to use my editing software, this is it while it's still in the editor. Of the lovely people that have chosen to support this channel, scrolling smoothly up the screen without any of their names cut off. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is, it's not my fault. Honestly, I'm doing my best. Um, but thanks in all seriousness to each and every single person that chooses to support the channel. I'm now up to 60 Patreons and I'm very, very close to 6,000 subscribers. So thank you very, very much to everyone that watches, everyone that supports me on Patreon, everyone that does anything positive towards helping my channel grow. Thanks, guys. It's truly, truly appreciated. And with that being said... I think that's about enough for one day. Don't forget, we've got um, a very, very special guest on the live stream on Sunday. And I will look forward to seeing you all there. And just very quickly before you go, don't forget to check out the playlist if it's your first time here. And hit the subscribe button and turn on bell notifications, obviously.